coffee has started to get a bad reputation. Whether it may be dehydration, causing cancer, increasing stress or disrupting your sleep. Well, does coffee actually cause all of these negative effects or does it actually bring in positive health effects when chosen properly and drunk correctly? In this video, we tackle the myth whether coffee is bad for you. Hello dear friends, welcome back to the channel and if you're new here consider subscribing. We do health tip, trick and hack videos and mythbuster videos just like this one every week. As always, these videos consist of a subject which in this case is coffee, then we move on to the facts, figures and the research to tackle the myth and finally the long awaited conclusion or the verdict, whether this is a myth or a fact. So with no further ado, let's dive in and figure out whether coffee is bad is a myth or a fact. Coffee is one of the largest consumed drinks in the world, with over 1 million cups of coffee consumed daily just in America. Coffee, just like wine, is an acquired taste, and with time, you tend to build a relationship and maybe even addiction with coffee. Whether it may be because of the conversation that you have over the cup of a coffee, or the zen art of making coffee, or simply the science behind making coffee. Irrespective of the reason, majority of us look forward to the next cup of coffee the next morning. Before we tackle the myth, let's have a quick coffee lesson and figure out how coffee beans are produced and how it impacts the flavor. Number one, coffee beans come from coffee cherries and these coffee beans are extracted either through a washing process or from a natural fermentation process. Dependent on the type of extraction of the bean, it impacts the flavor of the coffee. Number two, location. Your traditional cup of coffee that you would get, grab out of Starbucks comes from low altitudes, usually from areas such as Indonesia. Or if you choose to go for a high altitude coffee, which might usually be from countries like Ethiopia, might have lower tones of traditional bitterness and have more of a fruity flavor. This is as a result of the differences or the availability of oxygen depending on the altitude that the coffee bean is grown in. Number three, the type of roast. Lighter the roast, the lower the nodes of caramelization. The darker the roast, the larger the level of caramelization nodes. The actual scientific process is referred to as the Maillard reaction. So with that short coffee lesson, let's figure out whether there's a myth or a fact. Fact number one, dehydration. Coffee is a diuretic. There's millions of studies proving this. However, the catch here is that the amount of coffee used in these studies range from three, four, or even sometimes five cups of coffee, which ranges from 400 milligrams of caffeine to 800 milligrams of caffeine, which might not traditionally be the normal amount of coffee that you and I have on a daily basis. When consumed in moderation, i.e. a cup or maybe even two a day, there have been no instances of increases in dehydration. However, on the other hand, when consumed on large amounts, there has been recorded instances of increases of excretion for over 30% of your fluids. Wait, I'm gonna go get my cup of coffee. Some coffee and some organic milk. Number two, coffee is carcinogenic. Majority of the studies proving that coffee could cause cancer is as a result of an existence of a substance called acrylamide in the coffee bean. Acrylamide is the substance that is formed on starch vegetables when cooked above 120 degrees. That's that blackish brown look on your roasted potatoes. However, recent research has proved that acrylamide would appear in a light roasted bean, whereas if it's a dark roasted bean, there's no presence of acrylamide. And in addition to that, majority of studies have proved that there's no relationship between cancer and coffee consumption. And in addition to that, it's gone the extra mile and even proven sometimes positive impact in reducing the risk of cancer. The problem becomes aggravated when you open that instant sachet of coffee because majority of those instant coffee packets have fillers in them. Fillers such as genetically modified wheat husks, which might have been exposed to very high levels of temperature, pesticides and insecticides, and in addition to the fact that they're genetically modified, could naturally increase the risk of cancer. Number three, sleep disruption and anxiety. 
general heart health. Coffee is a stimulant, which means that you're gonna feel your heart pumping faster, your blood rushing quicker, and an increase in alertness, all classic signs of anxiety. The challenge here is whether the brain could differentiate whether it's actual anxiety or whether it's an influenced sense of a stimulant. There has been observational studies proving this theory where you've consumed two cups of coffee in a short amount of time results in anxious or anxiety being built up in individuals. In addition to that, the impact of caffeine in coffee lasts for over 12 hours during the day. So in that case, avoid drinking back-to-back -back cups of coffee and maybe that 4 p.m. cup of joe when you feel a bit down at work might not necessarily be the best idea. Number four, brain power. We've already discussed that coffee is a stimulant. Yes, brain power will be boosted momentarily due to the fact of alertness and the fact that blood rushes into your brain. Small caveat here, this is very theoretical. And for you to consistently keep up higher levels of productivity and focus, there's other non-controversial methods that you can introduce to your life. Number five, antioxidants. Coffee by far is the largest supplier of antioxidants, which means it will provide you with disease-fighting antioxidants. There's been over 19,000 studies proving this. The catch here is that the coffee needs to be grounded and brewed freshly. Number six, alternatives. Tea, especially matcha tea. These drinks have high levels of caffeine. So if you are to absorb the same levels of benefits, you could choose to go for a cup of tea. I personally switch between coffee and tea and sometimes give it up altogether to ensure that I have a healthy relationship with coffee and tea. Well, not right now. Number seven, pregnancy. There's been too much controversial research to actually come to a conclusion on this one. So just to be cautious, if you're pregnant, avoid coffee, caffeinated or decaffeinated. Last but not least, number eight, blood sugar levels and diabetes. This is a conflicting one. There's been num numerous studies supporting both ends to this. One side of the studies suggests that habituation and increasing sensitivity associated with caffeine will increase the resistance to insulin, making it more difficult for your cells to respond appropriately to the sugar levels, which results in diabetes. Whereas on the other side of the studies, studies have suggested that consuming coffee could actually reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes. So this area of conflict remains inconclusive. So with all that said, do you now think that we're ready to bust this myth? No. Provided that you stick to dark roasted beans, freshly grounded, consume in moderation, and before noon. Individuals who have digestive disorders, autoimmune diseases, or adrenal fatigue should avoid caffeine altogether until you overcome these ailments or conditions. That's all for this video. Hope you guys liked it. If you liked the video, comment, like, and share the video, and we'll see you on the next video.